welcome back to the channel Tony here so today <clears throat> we're going to install on the bike the um, MC cruise cruise control well, we have the instructions here we have the box and then we'll go ahead and uh, do the unboxing and show you what's inside here and then we're going to go ahead and strip the bike down we got to pull out the crash bars we got to pull out the fairings we're gonna have to pull the tank we get the seat in the tank, get it all stripped down. This is going to be a multiple day project. So today my plan is just to get everything stripped down and get it ready. And then tomorrow, hopefully get all the wiring done. So follow along. All right. So we got the tank removed. Everything's ready and set up for the wiring. I think I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put the unit right here because I have the Denali back here and I don't want to move that. So we're probably going to put it right here, which should be a good place for it. So we're going to go ahead and do some reading and uh, figure out what the next step is. This is where the unit's going to mount right here. So let's see, we'll get into it. All right, so the next step is to remove the uh, intake. So we've done that and then we're going to go ahead and install the um, switch up here and start routing the cable down through here and down underneath and back to there where I'm going to have the computer. Actually it says I got to be by the fuse box but that is the fuse box so we'll see. I did disconnect the battery so that's all done. We're all prepped. Now begins the fun. All right, so we got the switch mounted. Uh, similar to what they show here. Um, they show it a little bit lower. I can always move it. But I, I like the position so far, especially with the condition of my thumb. I think that's gonna work. Perfect. All right, so it's mounted and I routed it. Instead of going down on the left side, I'm coming here on the right side where there's a lot more room and then it comes out right here which I will secure it and comes out over here and there she is so we'll just see get the rest of the harness in and see what's going on but that's where we're going to put the uh, the module all right so this is the one that I have to remove right here so it's kind of attached back in here so we'll go ahead and, and remove that and uncouple that because that's the next thing we got to do. All right, I figured it out. So you got to push this little button right here. You push this in right here and it slides off. So I took this one off just to learn. I actually learned on this one because it's easiest accessible. And then I went and popped this one off to free this one up and this one came right off. So yeah, just, just push this in right here and slide it off. All right, so we got it unplugged. Uh, you really have to, you really have to push down on this right here and it's really difficult with uh, one hand, so. But I got it. So we'll go ahead and hook up what we need to next. Next, we plug this guy in. So it's pretty basic. The male goes into the female and the female goes into the male. Pretty straightforward. All right, so we've got the computer we got this hooked up. We went ahead and, and put in the, um, the pins that they require. These guys right here. It's fairly simple. You just follow the directions and the pin numbers and they pop right in. I didn't have to use a, uh, a, uh, a safety pin or anything like that. I just was able to just push them right in until they clicked. And then, uh, yeah, so it was pretty good. And then you plug this in. This was the one that came from uh, the controller up here. So that one comes from the controller runs down down along here and Then plugs in right there So I'll tie these down later um, So right now what I did is I ran this other line up through here and this is going to be the um, brake switch So right now I'm, I'm hooking those up these fit pretty well right here but they're really loose in here, so I got to tighten those up because those will just fall right out, and then I'll tape them. 
and I'll zip tie them and I'll do all kinds of fun stuff. But I don't want to do that until I make sure that the everything's right and connected. So we're just going to leave it like it is until we do a test of the system because we'll know once we hit the brake um, during the, uh, the learning uh, session whether that works or not. So I find it easier to disconnect this from the body there and that way I can really get to the connections here and I can uh, do whatever I need to do to secure everything and then I just need to put it back up in there. But uh, yeah, I would recommend disconnecting this and then that way you can uh, get all your connections really nice and done. All right, so we went ahead and routed this temporarily through there and we're gonna bring it up here. And we had to go ahead and pull this little, little guy off here. So uh, there's the groove. The groove goes pretty much just like this. So we'll set that aside and then we have to break loose the pink wire, which is this one right here. So we're gonna go ahead and try that with the tool. See what happens. There it is. So that wasn't too bad. Came right out. All right, so we just went ahead and put the pink wire in. Went right in, pretty easy. So we got that in. And then it says to, all right, so now we got to put the white piece back. So then the white piece goes back right like this. And they say it will not go back on if it's not correct. There we go. Looks good to me. And then if I'm not mistaken, you have to connect these two, two together right here. All right, so we'll get our heat shrink on there first. All right, so we went ahead and did this plug. Um, it's pretty accessible. It wasn't really attached to anything. It had. It had this on it, but it wasn't attached anywhere. So I'll, there's a little hole for it in there and I'll attach that when I go ahead and put her back together. But we went ahead and pulled this out. Um, I'm not sure. Hopefully we only have to mess with this one because there's no slack on this one. So we'll go ahead and take a look and see what we got to do. All right, so it's saying the pale light green wire is the one you got to remove. I guess it's that one right there. We'll take a look and see what pin pin number it is. But we do have to pull this little cap just like we did. So it's pretty much the same thing that you did here. You're going to do here. All right, so we pop this off. And it's pretty much going to go back the same way. Kind of like that. Always this little groove and these two are where this plug releases right here. So let's find out which one we got to release. There we go. We got it. All right, now we'll go ahead and fish this up. And then we're going to take this blue one and put it in. There we go. Click. And then we take these two and we'll connect those. We'll go ahead and put our heat shrink. Well, I sure hope this is right. Go ahead and put the retainer back on. There we go. Perfect. Go ahead and tuck this back in. Okay. So we should be able to plug these two back in. There we go. Just tuck those down in there. That. And we can put this back on. All right. So we can go ahead and put that back. Got the collared one goes here. There we go. We'll go ahead and tidy that up. Well, that's all the connection. So now I just need to get everything, make sure everything's routed right. Uh, get everything closed up and then start putting it back together. And we'll do that tomorrow, but that's all good. We'll kind of rest on it. Get this down here so it's out of the way. Find a good way to attach that and then tuck this back up underneath here. Yeah, very good. And we'll go ahead and start putting this sucker back together. So we've got this routed and we're not gonna tape it until we know for sure that that's the right uh, setup. And then, yeah, orange in front gray in back and it comes down and it's right here but we won't tie that all in it comes down through here runs over here and then this one and this one is going to get tucked and tied in here and then it'll get looped back up over here kind of like that so yeah pretty good we're going to clean this up too that's another reason i wanted to pull the tank is get some of this stuff cleaned up all right so we got everything tucked away uh, we're still not going to finish this up here until we do our test. 
but we got uh, new air filters got the the boxes back on got everything cleaned up and routed looks pretty good <clears throat> there's my unit we'll go ahead and try the seat real quick just to make sure nothing's binding but I think we're we're pretty much there I have other things I'm doing on the bike so I'll be uh, doing those while we're uh, working on this got those wires all tidied the sides in pretty good everything looking good so we'll go ahead and continue putting everything back together and getting ready for the uh, startup all right so we're gonna go ahead and dry fit the seat <clears throat> and make sure everything is cool with this and then uh, if that's good we'll go ahead and, and fit the tank and go ahead and put the seat back on and then we won't put the fairings and stuff on until we do our test so we'll do our test make sure everything's working and then we'll finally button everything up and then we'll go ahead and put the fairings on and we'll take it out for a ride all right it looks like there's plenty of room right there um, the seat's not going to sit any further down than this so we got plenty of room all right so the first step is just to turn the ignition on and see that these light up yeah, it says turn the ignition switch on if the lights come on after a second or so the cruise control is powered and the front brake switch connection is correct. So lights are on. All right, so we should be good. All right, so it does say to warm the bike up before you start the calibration process. So we're gonna go ahead and light and uh, warm the bike up and then we'll go ahead and start the calibration. All right, so the engine's warm. So the next thing we have to do is press and hold the set an on off button in the cruise control switch turn the ignition switch on don't start the engine wait until the indicator lights on the switch come on green momentarily or the back lights behind the buttons come on then release the set and on and off buttons do not start the engine okay, okay so we want to press we want to press and hold on off button press and hold set okay so we're gonna all right so we hold these two and we just turn the ignition so the lights come on there's the green light then we take it off okay apply and release the front brake do not turn the ignition on or off enter the tps throttle position sensor calibration mode okay so we're going to set the we're going to hold this and then we're going to press the set button six times so we hold that one two three four five six light comes on red make sure that the throttle is fully released idle position press and release the set button the light will change to green press and release the set button so that's this guy right here now it's back to red twist the, the grip to apply full throttle and hold okay press and release the reset button that's going to be the bottom one the light will change to yellow then the button is pressed and go back to red when released. Release the throttle. Press and hold the on off button until the red light changes to green. About two seconds. Okay, so now she's green. Slowly apply the throttle. When the throttle position moves from fully released, idle, the light will start to flash green. It will, con will continue to flash green as you apply more throttle. Okay, confirm. So we did the confirm. Slowly apply the throttle. When the throttle position is fully blah, 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 flash green, it will come flash and apply more throttle. At full throttle, the light will change to solid yellow. Calibration is correct. Throttle release. The light is solid, not flashing green. Good. Between full release and full throttle, flashing green, full throttle, solid, not flashing yellow. Pass full throttle shouldn't happen, shouldn't happen. Do not turn the ignition off. Check throttle operation. Press and hold the on off button till the green light changes to red, about two seconds. Okay, make sure that the bike is in neutral gear position. Observe the red light on the control switch and start the engine. All right, we're in neutral, start the engine. Small amount of throttle with each press. So we're gonna, which one's the set? Set button, so it should apply some throttle. There it goes. And then decrease.
All right, so that's working. Okay, so we're going to do one, two, two. All right, so she returned to idle. All right, there we go. So now we're going to do diagnostic. Diagnostic mode. Okay. This procedure tests all of the electrical connections other than the TPS sensor connect. Enter diagnostic mode with the ignition switch off. Press and hold the set on and off button. Turn the ignition on. Do not start until the indicator lights on the switch come on green momentarily for about three to five seconds, then release. Okay, so we're doing the same, putting it in the mode. So we're press holding the set button which is this one and the on and off and then turning the ignition on. Okay, green lights on, everything's good. Do not start the engine, wait until the indicator lights. Okay, apply and release the front brake. The light on the switch should come on green while the brake is applied and turn off when the brake is not applied. Enter diagnostic mode. Test electrical connections, button test. Press and release the set one at a time. So the set, front brake test, repeat, apply the front brake. The light on the switch should come on. Yep. Rear brake test. Yep. Here. We'll go ahead and put it into neutral. Here. Neutral. Here, neutral. Woohoo! All right, so we're done with the calibration. We're gonna go ahead and put everything back together and go ahead and take it for a ride and see what, uh, what happens. All right, so we'll go out and give it a try. I didn't read the manual as far as how to operate the, the uh, cruise control, but it should be pretty straightforward. There you go, set at 48. Cruising along. Very nice. Beautiful. I love it. Hit the brake and she's off. Absolutely love it. So basically it's on. Uh, I just hit this button to set it. This is the um, decelerate, accelerate button. And the middle one is just a colored button, I guess. I'll have to read the manual. Perfect. Look at that. We're set at uh, 43. We'll see how she holds. Perfect. Look at that. 42. That's back up to 43. But it's still holding. And then you can increase. So I just increased it. Now we're at 45. 46. Very good. My, uh, my right hand's gonna love the brake. We'll test it here up in speed. We'll get here on the freeway and go ahead and uh, give it a shot and see how she holds. But there it goes. Iron Butterfly has cruise control. The install wasn't too bad. I mean, it was tedious, you know, taking off all the, you know, fairings and the and the crash bars and but you know I needed to change my air filters anyways so um, I, you know that's not a big deal uh, pulling the tank I was kind of like oh I don't know about this I probably could have got away without pulling the tank just lifting it but I wanted to pull it because I wanted to really see what was underneath there and then get all my other stuff organized that I've had in there but pulling the tank was really simple uh, I did let it go all the way down to a empty so that I didn't have a full tank of gas that I was carrying around and that really helped. One thing I didn't check was to make sure my brake light was working but hell, we'll check that. We'll just have to see. Going to go to a mighty fine to get me a burger. I'm starving. It's like four o'clock. I haven't eaten. Curious to how low this will hold. Let's do 30. Yeah, it's holding. It's holding at 30. All right, so you can accelerate and it won't, uh, you know, so if you were passing and you didn't want to have to reset, that's good. That was well worth it. You know, you could probably get it done in a day, a full long day, depending on your, your abilities. 
and so on. I struggled because of my left hand. It was really hard to get some of those uh, those plugs out of there and, and plugged in. But otherwise, it's really straightforward. You could definitely do it in a day. Um, I did it over two days just because I wanted to be the first day to prep the bike, get it all stripped down, and then start off fresh with the uh, with the install. But it was really, you know, straightforward. Just read the instructions, follow the instructions, and you'll be fine. <laughs>